Good day. Welcome to Dutch's Talk Radio. I'm John Marino. We are produced by Shark Creative and made possible by Robeson Oil, the house that service built by Hightower Westchester, managing your wealth to a fiduciary standard throughout the Hudson Valley by Michael Labriola, land escape design and construction of Armonk in Westchester. They work up and down the Hudson Valley, as does Jaguar Land Rover, located throughout the Hudson Valley in places like New Rochelle, White Plains, and Mount Kisco. Joined by Dutchess County Supervisor Mark Molinaro. Mark Molinaro, the Republican candidate for Congress in the 19th Congressional District, and that with the redistricting, the Hochul Mandarin that kind of got kicked out by the court and the special master stepped in and reworked the lines and boundaries. This is a pretty wide ranging district from the mid Hudson, from Dutchess County, all the way up into the central part of New York State. Mark Molinaro, welcome back to Dutchess Talk Radio. You ran in a special election a few weeks ago in August. It turned out a certain way. Were you surprised it turned out the way it did? Well, I was hoping to win. I mean, losing is never great, although um, I will say, you know, we were running against some headwinds, uh, a couple Democratic congressional primaries uh, occurring at the same time. Uh, but listen, we came up short uh, in August. Uh, we're not going to come up short in November when most people, uh, one, know to vote and quite frankly, will have a, a much broader uh, voter turnout. But uh, always lessons learned, always uh, uh, ready for the next uh, fight. And uh, as I tell my kids, uh, and we all know we're not defined by uh, those moments that we fail, we're defined by whether or not we've learned from them. And so uh, we, uh, I'll continue, uh, continue fighting uh, for the people of this district uh, and look forward to their support in November. What lessons were learned? Well, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> hey, fair enough, right? <laughs> there, here, this is why I, 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 I learned them. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. And it seems Losing like is no fun. the new polling came out and you've got a pretty good lead, according to the polls. Yeah. Listen, the only poll that matters is November 8th. Uh, but we we do feel um, like the energy is on our side. Uh, uh, you listen, folks uh, understand they're overwhelmed by uh, the rising costs, uh, inflation highest in 40 years. We're starting to see gas prices start to come back up again. Why? Because Americans are driving. They have no choice but to get to work or take their kids to, to school or soccer practice. Uh, businesses are gearing up for the end of the year. And frankly, there's a there's an increased demand. The president can't continue to drain the strategic petroleum reserve. And therefore, we're starting to see prices back up again. Folks are buying their home heating fuel and paying energy costs that are all on the rise. They get it. They know it. Uh, and uh, frankly, we can't continue recklessly spending tax dollars. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, uh, communities feel less safe, uh, undermined uh, by policies that make it more difficult uh, here in New York to enforce the law and across the country. Uh, not giving adequate resources to police officers, law enforcement, and uh, uh, and to provide uh, for for public safety either here at home or at our borders. So I, I just would say that um, you know voters across the 19th district uh, they know what it's like to have government ignore them, uh, and we're fighting uh, fighting for every every last family, uh, every last farmer, and every last small business uh, all across this district. You talk about government ignoring people. The state Democratic Party chair, Jay Jacobs, looks at these numbers that show you having a 10 point lead in the polls. And he says, well, I don't trust certain polls. They're untrustworthy. Now, you just came from a candidates forum where your opponent, Josh Riley, apparently did not make the scene. And that to me is politicians ignoring the people. And I don't think this plays well. I don't either. Uh, listen, everybody has to make their choices. Uh, we had a forum with the Ulster Chamber of Commerce uh, this morning. Um, we've agreed to uh, three public forums so far. Um, I believe the only one Josh has agreed to is in Binghamton on Thursday. I look forward to that. Um, but uh, listen, to the point, um, you know, I, I polls are a little bit uh, uh, like everything else, right? Uh, uh, you can trust them or not, but uh, their temperature, uh, you know, a moment in time snapshot. Uh, but I do think at the end of the day, voters deserve to hear from us, uh, not our paid ads. I mean, with all due respect, uh, my opponent is now spending $700,000 a week on television saying some really awful things about me. Uh, it's the way it goes. I think it's unnecessary. And frankly, uh, he's using dollars that come from wherever, dark money from all across the country. Uh, it must be because they think that we can win. And so uh, at the end of the day, I just uh, will continue to uh, to speak up and, and stand up for the voters uh, of this district, the residents and families I hope to serve. Uh, and uh, November 8th is what matters. Uh, we can send a very powerful message all across this country that uh, we've had enough. We need government to work for us. Uh, and we want someone uh, who's going to speak up, regardless of party, to speak up for the issues that are important to us. 
How tied into the governor's race is your race, the Lee Zeldin, Kathy Hochul race, especially considering that Kathy Hochul took what I thought was a real cheap shot at you and at Lee Zeldin a couple of weeks ago saying, why doesn't Zeldin and Molinaro just go down to Florida? Wait, don't they just go down to Florida and go live with Ron DeSantis down there? Or words to that effect. Well, she basically said that there's no place in New York for me, uh, which means, by the way, there's no place in New York for my wife or my family, according to uh, to Kathy Hochul. It's not political rhetoric. It's not something that you just cast aside. And it's not something, quite frankly, that anyone in elected office uh, should say. I, uh, and so um, what I'd offer is that single party rule in New York state has to come to an end. And so, um, you know, our races are tied together in that there needs to be accountability. Uh, lack of, of, of accountability in government results in lack of transparency, lack of transparency, corruption. And Kathy Hochul continues uh, this culture uh, embedded in state government of corruption and is unwilling to acknowledge or confront it, instead casting aspersions and attacking people like me, who, quite frankly, um, you know, I want to do my job. I want to represent people. I want to serve the community. Uh, and rather than talking like that, we ought to be talking about why there are thousands upon thousands of New Yorkers who are actually getting on buses or their cars and leaving uh, for Florida uh, because it's easier to, to to support a business. It's easier to retire in Florida. It's less tax, uh, less taxed and less expensive in Florida. There are lower property taxes and more job opportunities and parents, families, and communities are involved in education in Florida. And so all I would offer uh, is uh, perhaps you might look in the mirror. We all ought to, uh, and confront the real challenges facing real people, high property taxes, high cost of living, lack, lack of job opportunities, uh, public safety undermined. These are the things that, uh, uh, that voters, residents, families all across this district, all across New York want us to pay attention to is what I've uh, I've been talking about uh, these last few months, and uh, I don't intend to get on a bus, uh, well, or anywhere. I saw the new numbers that came out today about how many people are leaving New York in droves, especially higher echelon taxpayers, and how few are coming in to states like New York and California, whereas Florida is drawing all these people, and very few people are exiting the Sunshine State to come to New York, California, and states like that. President Biden's comments a couple of weeks ago about so-called MAGA Republicans and pretty much anybody who opposes him in general. If you were in Congress, how would you work to maybe set the president straight because he seemingly needs to be set straight? Well, here's here's the thing. First, um, a one party rule is never good. And so demanding accountability, holding the administration uh, accountable and responsible for its policies is our priority. The president ought to uh, stop using that kind of language. It is divis divisive. It's unnecessary. And just because you want to point to somebody else who said it doesn't necessarily make it good. And so uh, my point my point here is um, that every American deserves to have their voice heard. There are people who feel disenfranchised because they are. And rather than uh, suggesting that they just are less of an American, uh, he ought to be working to lift us all up. That's what I hope to do. I hope to work across party lines. I'm not running to be on the team red or team blue. I'm running to try to bring people together uh, to solve problems. But that also demands that we hold uh, decision makers, policymakers, and the president accountable. And uh, I think as, uh, as a country, uh, we are better uh, when we try to lift each other up to confront challenges not tear each other down. And I think the president, no president, uh, should ever use language like that. And uh, frankly, um, you know, it's it, you can see it, by the way, uh, in candidates across the country. If you disagree with them, like my opponent, he simply says, you're an extremist. You have no place here. That is not acceptable language. And by the way, it does also encourage really bad behavior. We saw a young man lose his life uh, uh, because of his political ideology. And we've seen this before. There is no place for it. And so rather than using it, uh, the president ought to turn off the red lights, uh, get out from behind the podium and try to bring people together. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. You talk about the incident in one of the Dakotas where a so-called very liberal young man took a vehicle and struck and killed someone he perceived to be a Republican, as it turned out. Mark Molinaro joins us here on Dutchess Talk Radio, the Dutchess County Executive and the candidate for the 19th Congressional District, the newly redrawn 19th, stretching from Dutchess and the Mid-Hudson Valley all the way up into the central part of New York State. So Mark Molinaro goes to Washington, D.C. How does he help to fix the economy, bring down, like you said, some price, gas prices were coming down and going back up again. Baby formula shortage. Nobody talks about it anymore, but it seems to be worse than ever. Inflation, worse than ever. No end in sight. And I don't think we're going to get a soft 
landing with this economy is going to be a hard landing. What do we do? It's going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, first, we have to demand accountability in government and rein in spending. And so I believe there will be a, a Republican majority in the House of Representatives. I look, look forward to serving in the majority and reining in spending. You cannot spend. The federal government cannot spend money it doesn't have. It cannot continue to print cash, uh, weakening uh, the American economy, and it cannot continue to push uh, cost onto taxpayers. You know, regardless of who's paying, at the end of the day, we're all paying too much. And so uh, starting there, I think we can assert an economy that's strong and secure for uh, for America. That means, by the way, strengthening supply chains by reinvesting here at home. Instead of uh, seeing our jobs and businesses leave for China, we need to make it more affordable, more uh, uh, competitive uh, and easier for businesses to expand. Medium, small, uh, large size businesses all across America expand here, growing job opportunities, growing the economy here in America, creating, uh, eliminating those uh, weaknesses in the supply chain. We also have to assert American energy independence, that at the very least out, outsourcing uh, energy uh, creation, petroleum uh, and uh, natural resource uh, uh, extraction states that don't care about the environment, and, excuse me, countries that don't care about the environment or care about us is a mistake. It's weakening uh, our security and it's making us more expensive. Just sending those messages, that message and reining in spending will send uh, I believe will 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 make a very measurable difference in driving down costs for ordinary Americans. But at the same time, at the same time, we've we've got not only to ensure a safe a secure economy, we need safe communities. And people, you know, people can't go to work and they can't get their kids off to school if they don't feel comfortable and safe. And creating, by the way, safe schools, educational opportunities that meet our economic needs will grow the economy here. Uh, protect uh, uh, and, and enhance uh, public safety here, uh, but also uh, uh, strengthen and secure uh, our our economy, which is necessary. Grow American jobs, grow American businesses, and invest in the American supply chain from from food products uh, to manufacturers. It's it's necessary to drive down cost and and strengthen and enhance uh, America's economy. Would you have voted for the Inflation Reduction Act? Uh, the short answer is no. I try not to, um, uh, uh, you know, do these hypotheticals. I wasn't there. I'd like, I'd love to have seen a bill that actually does reduce uh, inflation. Uh, that the the federal government decided that spending more money, and by the way, borrowing more money, was somehow going to reduce inflation. It isn't. In fact, uh, in the out years, uh, it may uh, excuse me, in the immediacy, it may increase uh, inflation. That and the and the president's uh, uh, deferral of student loans. Uh, will continue to add cost and uh, cost to the economy, cost to the government, and cost to taxpayers. Same time, as I said this this morning, there is no problem in the history of the world from biblical times to today that have ever has ever been solved by hiring more IRS uh, agents, hiring more tax collectors, uh, and and it and it speaks to priority. Government needs to be efficient, needs to be able to be more effective with less. We need to hold it accountable, not expand its resources. And at the same time, provide uh, relief, meaningful relief to tax. Mm -hmm. The money that supposedly is going to go now to all these IRS agents and employees, 87,000 people overall, could that have been better spent maybe hiring more border patrol guards, more border patrol security? Because the immigration issue is at the top of the list, too. And that's seemingly out of hand. We have now let in under Joe Biden more people into this country than the city of Chicago has Overall, that doesn't tell us where the immigration and migration situation is at. I don't think anything will. Well, first, let me again say no problem has ever been solved by adding tax collectors. And therefore, the resources could be better used in community policing and securing our borders. Uh, we are seeing, we saw a million individuals, right, undocumented individuals cross, this, uh, cross our borders over the last year. We are seeing thousands upon thousands every day, and at the same time with them, uh, illicit drugs, fentanyl, uh, synthetic uh, uh, drugs, uh, taking lives, taking lives. I mean, one backpack of, of uh, synthetic fent fentanyl could kill the entire 19th congressional district, and we're seeing both that which we, uh, we apprehend and we know more coming into the country. There's a humanitarian crisis at our border, and the president seems to want to ignore it. And so I think we ought to be securing uh, our border. We should use physical uh, investment. There needs to be use of technology and there needs to be use. Uh, we need to support enforcement. At the same time, those resources can go to community policing uh, so that we can interfere and uh, 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 slow the, uh, the, uh, the sale of drugs all throughout our communities. 
That isn't, by the way, a one-time little grant from the police department. We need sustained, uh, comprehensive uh, support for community policing across America so we can dr- deal with uh, illegal drugs, we can confront violent crime, and we can enhance uh, public safety. And those are the kinds of priorities that I think ordinary families uh, uh, and, and, and citizens are concerned about. Mm, should we do more for Ukraine? And would you advise Joe Biden, if you were in Congress, and say, hey, Mr. President, when you say something about Taiwan, please ask those around you not to reinterpret your words for you? Well, I, the problem we've had with the president is he does say one thing, and then this, then the staff says, well, what this is what he really meant. And I, I get that. Um, yeah, I, I think one single message in particular uh, towards China has to be clear. Uh, I think uh, uh, yeah, embracing uh, Taiwan has to be clear. Uh, and so these are, uh, th- you know, th- that, that level of confusion seems to be the uh, mode uh, of operations for this White House. Um, but uh, let me get back to the first part of that question. I, I think America has met its financial obligation uh, to Ukraine. I-, I don't think that we need to continue to expand American resources for dollars. What we do need to do, however, is marshal uh, freedom-loving de- democratic nations across the globe to make it perfectly clear that what Vladimir Putin is continuing to do uh, is a crime and that uh, and that it needs to end and it needs to end quickly. Uh, but because uh, this country seems to be leading from behind and rather the president continues to send dollars, which, by the way, are not getting effectively on the ground, humanitarian crisis all, all throughout uh, Ukraine, uh, resources needed to get to uh, to those uh, uh, forced out of their homes, out of their communities, living in, in, in war torn areas. If we're going to spend those dollars, they need to be effectively uh, the need needs to be effectively met. I don't believe it is. And I don't believe there's a, a strong enough commitment to ensure that those dollars uh, are getting uh, to where they say they're supposed to. And if they're not, we shouldn't be spending them. And so, yes, I, I do think we've met our financial obligations. I do think that we ought to marshal the world uh, in response. Others need to step up. Uh, and we need to make perfectly clear uh, that we are not going to find ourselves uh, in a position where we're putting boots on the ground. Uh, America, uh, uh, Vladimir Putin and, and Russia needs to end the incursion, end the, end the war, uh, and uh, there needs to be uh, a strong, uh, unified response from the world. House Minority Leader Republican Kevin McCarthy says toward the end of this week, when everybody gets together to see if we can get another bill to keep the government open and working at least for a few more weeks or a few more months, he says, hey, Republicans, let's not sign on to this unless we do something about immigration in this bill. Is this the right way to go or do we need to just get the bill moving so the government keeps running and then we can work on inflation and immigration and everything else separately. The problem is Democrats in Washington don't want to confront uh, the massive humanitarian crisis at our borders. And I would use every tool as a member of the minority and hopefully next year as a member of the majority to leverage uh, our security. And and so um, I believe that uh, what should happen is Democrats should agree to confront security at our border. Uh, Opioids flooding into our country at our border and ports of entry. Fentanyl taking thousands upon thousands of lives all across America. I believe Democrats should take uh, the opportunity to work with Republicans to solve this, to invest in it, to protect us. And if they don't, then yeah, I do think we ought to leverage every resource in order to get their attention. How many lives need to be taken? Uh, how uh, How many crises, how many Uh, lives lost uh, need there be uh, for Washington to finally confront what is a crisis at our borders. And I do think it has everything to do uh, with not only security uh, as a nation, uh, but safety in our communities. And frankly, we ought to leverage uh, an outcome. We've been without Indian Point for over a year now in our area, home base, home district area, northern Westchester, which, you know, worked up and down throughout the Hudson Valley and around the tri-state area to supply energy. And on the other end of the coin, we have the green economy. Can we mix old and new sources of energy, the old sources of gas, et cetera, and coal with green energy and make it all work as one? Well, we have to mix them. And all of the above energy approach is what should happen. But Democrats in Washington and New York want to ignore it. They think that somehow you could simply transition to renewables uh, without making the necessary infrastructure in investments, right? Our energy grid, our electric grid is not sufficient. Or, uh, the kind of transition. We don't have enough energy generation. We ought to be relying on a natural gas and, and nuclear. We ought not to be uh, trucking it in from other countries, reliant on them. 
Uh, and in doing so, we can drive down cost. We can strengthen American energy independence, uh, strengthen our energy security, and by the way, make a, a reasonable common sense transition uh, to more renewable energy sources. Absent that, we are headed towards disaster. You don't have to look very far. Uh, you know, uh, in California, they want you to buy more and more electric vehicles, and then they tell you you can't necessarily charge them up at night uh, or during the day because there's too much uh, too much consumption. Yeah, the grid is not sufficient. Energy generation is not sufficient. And by the way, I'll, I'll put this one last plug in. In closing down Indian Point, uh, keep in mind that 85, 90% of energy generation upstate is all renewable. It's nuclear and hydro. Downstate is exactly the opposite because uh, they turn their back on a smart energy plan of transitioning uh, towards, again, all of the above, including renewables, nuclear, uh, and, and reasonable transition using natural gas. Uh, the governor's response is to take a giant extension cord from Canada, churn up the center of the Hudson River, and, and bring it down uh, to New York City. I don't know if she knows this, but we spent the last 50 years trying to clean up the Hudson River trying to make it a usable, uh, a renewed resource for our environment. Uh, perhaps we ought to take that more seriously. Mm -hmm. And we could also, if we do this, if we regenerate our own energy and get back to what we were doing a few years back, we could also help our friends in Europe weather the incoming Vladimir Putin lack of energy and coal, et cetera, this winter and electricity storm. Yeah, listen, first of all, um, uh, under this president, we may have uh, sufficient leases, but they've slowed the permitting process to allow for natural resource uh, extraction and refining here uh, in this country, which makes us, by the way, not only less secure for ourselves, but unable to necessarily support others. Beyond that, the president is arbitrarily uh, uh, and, and um, uh, 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 excuse me, not arbitrarily, uh, it's, it, uh, he's, he's inflating uh, uh, the uh, oil supply by draining the str strategic petroleum reserve, uh, which for the moment, right, for the last several months has, uh, has provided at least some gas relief uh, at the pump. Uh, but we can't sustain that. Uh, we, we are now at the lowest levels in generations and at the same time don't have uh, the capacity uh, to support uh, uh, ourselves in time of crisis uh, because uh, of the continued depletion uh, of the reserve. And that also, by the way, means we are less able to assist our, our, our allies and partners across the world. And oh, by the way, the Hudson River is much cleaner than it was decades ago. And we thank people like you and your efforts to make that possible through the years. Thank you for that. Yeah, appreciate it. We made it a priority over, the la over my entire lifetime, and we're not turning back. Mark Molinaro is the Dutchess County Executive joining us here in Dutchess Talk Radio, Republican candidate for the 19th Congressional District seat running from Dutchess in the Mid-Hudson Valley all the way up into central New York. Best of luck, Election Day. Let's talk again. Let's do that. Be well. Thanks very much. You too. Thank you, Mark. All the best. Mark Molinaro here, Dutchess Talk Radio. I'm John Marino, produced by Shark Creative, made possible by Robeson Oil, the house that service built also by Jaguar Land Rover of New Rochelle, White Plains, Mount Kisco, and up and down throughout the Hudson Valley. Also, too, by Michael Labriola, landscape design and construction of Armonk End. Also by Hightower, Westchester, managing your wealth to a fiduciary standard throughout the Hudson Valley. Catch all of our Duchess Orange, also Westchester, Rockland, Putnam, and Fairfield County. Talk radio programming on our YouTube channel, Shark Creative YouTube, and now we are on Apple Podcasts, too. 